big storms with sustained rainfall moved through Nebraska Wednesday night into early Thursday. The National Weather Service tallied total rainfall up to 10 inches in some parts. Corn and soybeans that had been planted now sit under inches of water, leading to problems with oxygen, disease, and eventually crusting. Thursday morning, we talked with Nebraska Extension's Nathan Mueller near Wahoo to learn more about the issues now facing these fields. With about 57% of the corn crop in and 9% emerged and now even 12% of the soybeans in, uh, the main question farmers have is when we get these big rains, we had about four inches here uh, in Saunders County, is how long can that crop last under, under ponded or saturated conditions? And like you said, the main thing is oxygen. Uh, so there's several factors that are going to affect that. The, the main thing is probably temperature. It's pretty warm here today after this event. That's not going to help us out. Generally, um, germinating seeds, corn seeds, and emerged corn plants that are small, you have about two to four days, and as it's warmer, it's going to inch towards more of that two-day side. So as we get, if this water stays here for two days, we're going to start to see some decrease in our final stand that we're going to get. And as that period increases, you know, we run the risk that some of these areas are going to have to be replanted. What are the oxygen problems that plants either above ground or below ground have? Yes, so germinating seeds are ones that have just emerged. Uh, they really have to get their oxygen from the soil, right? So that's the main thing. Even if it's not ponded but saturated, they still can't get the oxygen they need. Now, emerged plants, where corn plants are maybe two inches tall, some oxygen can diffuse from the shoot down to the root. So that will help increase the survival a little bit. But again, if, depending on how deep your water is, our corn crop really is not tall enough probably to handle some of the water that's sitting in fields. How long before it's a problem, as in how long can it stay below not getting oxygen? Yeah, it, about two to four days without oxygen, we're going to start to lose plants. Uh, soybeans during the germination process is even more sensitive. Uh, even 48 hours of flooding, we're going to start to see some fairly significant uh, decreases in germination and final plant population. There's been probably less studies done on soybeans, but the one that they've done have shown that they're pretty sensitive early on. Now, if we had soybeans that were V2 to V3 stage, two to three trifoliates, they can actually survive pretty long in saturated conditions. Uh, studies in Ohio showed even up to seven days. So actually soybeans can survive a little bit longer as emerged plants in these conditions in corn, but unfortunately our soybean crop's not as far as long as that is with the rain event we just had last night. Are there any numbers that indicate what you might be looking at in terms of reduced stand or even yield at this point? Yeah, uh, reduced stands in soybeans uh, on that 12% that planted in these flooded areas, we could see a 20 to 40% reduction in stand in those areas, depending again how long that we see the flooding. Corn, it just depends. So there's, there's several factors, the genetics, the growth stage of the corn, the soil type, the duration of the flooding. Um, but some of the other things we have to worry about, even if it's just ponded soil, but we also had ground where water ran over or flooded from streams. So even emerged corn crops in that case, we had sediment, residue, bury the plants. So again, you're gonna lose those. And then we're gonna run into seedling diseases, both in corn and soybeans. And so that's something we need to work with the plant pathologist uh, when we talk about replants. Yeah. Do we need to use seed treatment? Something we learned last year when I was in uh, up in the Ewing area and those flooded creek bottoms there is it was late enough we thought we didn't need the seed treatment to protect our plants. Um, but we saw a lot of damping off, a lot of seedling disease in soybeans in those grounds that were replanted on these flooded soils. So, um, you know, as, as I get older, I get a little bit more experience. It would be a situation that I would definitely lean towards telling producers to continue to use that seed treatment when they replant these flooded soils. In a lot of these areas that received a lot of rain, how much is crusting going to be a problem if the plants are below the ground? Yeah, crusting with these hard, heavy rains that we had, especially south of Lincoln where they had areas of 10 inches, crusting could be a real big problem, especially on work ground. Uh, ground that's been tilled, we generally see more crusting issues. And so that's going to be a big problem. A lot and out of people have a rotary, rotary hose anymore to, to deal with that. And so there's going to be, growers need to work with their agronomist uh, to watch the crop um, over the next seven days, see what plants make it, what don't, and evaluate the need to replant. You mentioned replant, but what about if you haven't planted the field yet? How patient do you need to be getting in there for the first time? You know, farmers are usually pretty good judge of when they know it's too wet or not. And so if they think it's too wet, they should probably stay out. I always ask my dad that, yeah, it's too wet and he's planting because uh, we've had five inches in the month of April uh, up in the Dodge County area. So um, if you can stay off those wet soils, those compacted problems that you get, whether it's um, compacted sidewalls or just compaction from the down pressure, I've seen that show up later and we get some flash droughts later in the season. Um, that can really hurt you in terms of yield getting into the ground uh, too soon after these flooded soils to plant. Thank you.